Hey guys, welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know, I like to get into my introduction and disclaimer before getting started with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, 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 you guys. I'm Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I'm a family nurse practitioner and the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, review courses, review videos, review books, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success, and I would love to assist you as needed. You know, I like to always get into my disclaimer, reminder that we know there's no absolute medicine. We treat on a patient-by-patient basis, so any of the questions that you see here are created and designed by myself based on the current guidelines that are being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. Now, if I am doing videos that I'm teaching on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion, okay? So with that being said, let's get into question number one for today. Question number one states, a patient presents to the office with complaints of otalgia. Upon examination, the nurse practitioner notes that the patient's tympanic membrane is red and inflamed. Based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? Is it A, otitis externa, B, swimmer's ear, C, acute otitis media, or D, cholestoma. Take a moment to tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. All right, you guys, you know, I always recommend reading the stem of the question first because it allows you to slow down and ensure that you're answering what is even being asked, right? So here the stem of the question states, based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? So we're looking for a diagnosis. We have to run it back and look at the assessment findings to create our differential and figure out what all of these things put together to form our diagnosis, right? So this patient came in complaining of otology. You know, the, these are the subjective findings, things they're stating that is wrong. On exam, the nurse practitioner notes that the tympanic membrane is red and inflamed, so objective findings, but on assessment, it's noted that their tympanic membrane is red and inflamed. So when you're thinking about these, this is a classic presentation for acute otitis media. Remembering that that tympanic membrane, the, the media, the middle of the ear is red, inflamed, the otalgia, that pain in the ear. Otitis external will have more of that tragal pain on the external portion of the ear. And swimmer's ear and otitis external are the same thing, okay? All right, question number two. The patient has been diagnosed with acute otitis media and the nurse practitioner is planning treatment. The patient denies any allergies. What is the best treatment for this patient? Is it A, doxycycline, B, amoxicillin, C, azithromycin, or D, augmentin? Take a moment and tell me what you got. All right, so the stem of the question states, what is the best treatment for this patient? So you know when we're talking treatment, you got to run it back and see what the diagnosis is. Have they given us a diagnosis and we're just looking to treat it? Or if they have not, then we need to take it a step further and look at those assessment findings, come up with the diagnosis, and then treat. Because we can't treat something if we don't know what it is, right? So here they let us know that the patient has been diagnosed with acute otitis media. They don't have any allergies, so we're free game on what we can utilize to treat them, right? So your best answer is B, amoxicillin, because that's first line therapy for acute otitis media, okay? So B is your best answer. And then lastly, question number three for today, the patient returns to the office with complaints of continued otalgia and fever after completing the prescribed amoxicillin. What is the next best treatment option by the nurse practitioner? Is it A, doxycycline, B, continue with amoxicillin, C, augmentin, or D, azithromycin? Take a moment and tell me what you got, you guys. So still the question states, what is the next best treatment option by the nurse practitioner? And this is huge on why I say read the stem of the question as well. It's asking for the next and best step. So what would you do next? Not what could you do, but what is the next thing and the best thing to do at this standpoint? So the patient comes back, they continue to have otalgia, they have a fever, they've already completed the amoxicillin, that first line therapy for acute otitis media. So what do we do now? 
And so second line therapy for acute otitis media is C, augmentin. Remember, if you see any of my videos on acute otitis media, I tell y'all to think of the A's. A for acute otitis media, A for your first line therapy of amoxicillin, uh, A for augmentin for your second line therapy, and then A for azithromycin for that third line. So how this works is just like these scenarios I try to walk you through um, is if it's straightforward, no allergies, we go boom straight to amoxicillin first line. If our amoxicillin doesn't work, we want to go with our augmentin textbook is to bump up to that second line therapy of augmentin, right? I know we can do things differently in practice. We do things on a patient by patient basis, but for testing purposes, for its purposes, you know, we're going to go second line therapy for augmentin. Now, if your patient would have had a penicillin allergy, we would have went directly to that azithromycin, okay? So just kind of giving you ideas of ways that you can work this pathway. So making sure that when you're studying, you know what those signs and symptoms are for your assessment findings, knowing what that diagnosis is based off of those um, presentation, knowing how to treat these first line, second line, third line, et cetera. Okay. So all right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well, but make sure to meet me back here. And if you need any other resources that I offer, either my review book, which is an ebook option, as well as paperback, they are both linked in the bio of this channel. Um, I know someone said the other day that you had difficulty, uh, but the link is working and I also put it in the comments there. So just let me know if you're still having any difficulty with that. But they're both linked in the bio of this channel. Also, self-paced review course for family, adult, general, preparing for both exams, AAMP as well as ANCC. There is an individualized self-paced course that you can watch and go through each system on any device that is also linked in the bio of the channel. We are currently in our five-week review course. It is a group course that I do periodically throughout the year. So just be on the lookout for the next one because we just started one on yesterday. And then lastly, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. Either if you are looking to uh, strengthen a weakness on a weak area, if you are looking for an exam readiness assessment, or if you want the custom package, say you've been unsuccessful before and you just don't know what to do to get back on track to be successful, then that is our custom package. But I always recommend reaching out so that we can gauge exactly what you need since everything is so customized. But if you need any of the resources, give us a call at 803-400-6864. You can also shoot a text message to that number or shoot us an email at the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. But y'all know what to do. Make sure you meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.